Hello and welcome to the fourth week of season 23, Season of the Wish, starting on December 19th, 2023. So for week four, let's get going with our legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a strong curse level, which means Petra Venge can be found in Rio Silvia and has the Dark Monastery mission for the next week. The Blind World features Taken enemies and the Plague Ainamina. The Ascendant Challenge this week will be Ouroboros, which can be located over in the Aphelion's Rest Lost Sector on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the Moon, the weekly story mission is in the Deep. The Drove Guardian is located in the Hellmouth, while the Wandering Nightmare is the Nightmare Resort in Sorrow's Harbour. And the Nightmare Hunt this week will be Tanix, Isolation, Zydron, Servitude, and Ghoul, Rage. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Paraxis the Technocrat will be the Empire Hunt, Cadmus Ridge will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Safeguard. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, Death of Eternity Legendary Rounds are Hive, Fallen, and for the final round, Valister Arc. The Loot Rotation will be on Week 3's Rotation, with the Scatterhorn Armor Set, and the Lightkin armor set being available. The weapons available this week are the Kinetic Rapid Fire Frame Auto Rifle Chroma Rush, the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Grenade Launcher Ignition Code, the Void Rapid Fire Frame Pulse Rifle Grid Skipper, the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Sidearm Farewell, the Solar Pinpoint Slug Frame Shotgun Sonja's Tail, the Void Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun Shattered Cipher, the Arc Position Frame Fusion Rifle Main Ingredient, the Kinetic Adaptive Frame Sniper Rifle Long Shadow, the Arc Armalon Adaptive Frame Sidearm Last Dance, the Kinetic Aggressive Frame Shotgun Toil and Trouble, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Shotgun Wishbringer, and the Void Adaptive Frame Pulse Rifle Last Perdition. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen weekly story mission is the Ritual, where the modifier is Fire Pit, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also, this week you will have Altar of Reflections Choice and Altar of Reflections Insight. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Veritas armor, and a weapon pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful expansion, the weekly mission is Breakneck, with extra shields, block loadouts, and extra champions. Barrier, Overload, and Unstoppable champions, Void Threat, Pestilence, Kinetic Overcharge, Stasis and Solar Surges, with Overcharge rocket launchers, and Galvanized on Hero difficulty only. The Partition mission will be Hard Reset, Contest mode enabled with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, Arc Threat, Martyr and Empath modifiers, Void and Strand Shields, with Stasis and Solar Surges. And the Vex Incursion this week will be Liming Harbour. In addition, the Weekly Lightful Reset also refreshes the Pinnacle Drop for the Node Override Avalon Exotic Mission on the EDZ. For the Season of the Deep, all three fishing ponds are now exotic all week. Raids and Dungeons the Crota's End Raid Challenge this week is the second encounter, across the bridge, called Precarious Balance. Guardians cannot step on the bridge while it is fully formed. Plus, if you complete the weekly challenge on Master, you'll get an Adept Weapon. The Adept Weapon you get is a random drop, but works on a knockout system. You will get a new one with every challenge you complete every week until you've unlocked them all. The Root of Nightmares Raid Challenge this week is the third encounter, Macrocosm, called Cosmic Equilibrium. Players must swap all of the dark planets to the left side of the room and all of the light worlds to the right. The King's Fall Raid Challenge this week is the first encounter, Totems, called The Grass is Always Greener. Players cannot take the same brand type twice in a row. The Vow the Disciple Challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Rook, called Looping Catalyst. This is where Guardians must not lose the Leeching Force buff before the damage phase. The Deep Stone Crypt Challenge this week is the second encounter, Atrax 1, called Copies of Copies where you must not send any Atrax-1 replicant debuffs into the airlock slash space. The Garden of Salvation challenge this week is the second encounter, Spy Defense, called A Link to the Chain. This is where all Guardians must receive the Enlightened buff at the same time. And the last wish challenge this week is the first encounter, Kali, called Summoning Ritual. Players must activate and cleanse all 9 plates, then kill all 9 knights and ogres before damaging Kali. Your pinnacle raid will be the Vault of Glass over in the Legends tab, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Confluxes, called Wait For It, where every yellow bar wyvern must be killed as they sacrifice themselves to the Confluxes. The second encounter, Oracles, called The Only Oracle For You. Players cannot destroy the same oracle more than once. The third encounter, Templar, called Out Of Its Way, where you must keep the Templar from teleporting. The fourth encounter, Gatekeeper, called Strangers In Time. Players must defeat the Praetorians and wyverns at the same time. And the fifth encounter, Atheon, called Ensembler's Refrain. Each player teleported can only destroy one oracle in each spawn set. 
Also, with the Vault of Glass being the featured raid, this does mean that you can farm the final boss for a chance at the exotic fusion rifle Vex Mythoclast. The Pinnacle Dungeon will be the Shattered Throne over on the Dreaming City, and our exotic mission rotator will be Operation Seraph Shield, with the Revision Zero Exotic Pulse Rifle being the main reward. Craftable weapons available from this mission include the Stasis Aggressive Frame Linear Fusion Rifle Fire and Forget, the Arc Lightweight Frame Bow Tripwire Canary, the Stasis Aggressive Burst Pulse Rifle Disparity, the Arc Adaptive Frame Trace Rifle Path of Least Resistance, the Solar Aggressive Glaive Judgment of Kelgoroth, the Void Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun Retrofit Escapade, the Void Precision Frame Hand Cannon Icalos HC, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Shotgun Icalos SG, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Sniper Icalos SR, and the Arc Aggressive Frame Submachine Gun Icalos SMG, with the Warmind's Avatar Armor Set. Next up, Challenges. Wish Seeker 4, complete week 4 of Wishing All the Best. 4, Challenge XP Plus. Wishing Well, open 25 chests in Riven's Lair and the Coil. 4, Challenge XP Plus Plus. Foes of the Dragon Vex, defeat 125 Vex anywhere in the system. Defeating Vex in Riven's Lair of the Coil grants additional progress. Additionally, break 10 pots in the Coil. 4, Challenge XP Plus. Gotta win them all, complete activities in Vanguard, Gambit or Crucible Playlist. Bonus progress is granted for completing Vanguard playlist activities at hero difficulty or higher, or for winning Gambit or Crucible matches. 4. Challenge XP++ Grandmaster Complete any Nightfall Strike on Grandmaster. 4. Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. And one hidden challenge, keep it secret, keep it safe. Hello. Hello. As a reminder, your daily loss sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armour you will find inside. But if you're new to the game or using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the Lost Sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team. But you'll only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. This season we'll see the introduction of gunsmith engrams, as well as a selection of foundry weapons for completing legend and master Lost Sectors while solo. With legend being a 70% chance to master being 100%, assuming the guardian is thorough enough to leave no champion standing. Thorough completions on Master difficulty will also have the advantage of weapons dropping an additional perk in either the 3rd or 4th column. The weapons available from the Lost Sectors are grouped into 4 weapons per day over 4 days, and after the 4th day the cycle repeats back to the first set. The following weapons will be available from the Lost Sectors during the Season of the Wish. Day 1, the Strand High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle Nox Perennial 5. The Strand Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle Old Sterling. The Solar Rapid Fire Frame Grenade Launcher Marcellion C and the Stasis Omelon Adaptive Frame Sidearm Sinua SI6. Day 2, the Stasis High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle Cyhomatic 5, the Strand Precision Frame Scout Rifle Glissando 47, the Strand Vice Rapid Fire Frame Sniper Rifle Urakanji, and the Arc Adaptive Frame Sword Nazaradin. Day 3, the Solar Lightweight Frame Sidearm Heliocentric QSC, the Kinetic Aggressive Frame Sniper Rifle Last Foray, the Arc Aggressive Frame Shotgun Hand in Hand, and the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Pulse Rifle Battle Scar. Day 4, the Nadir Void Adaptive Frame Sword Geodetic HSM, the Arc Aggressive Frame Hand Cannon Combined Action, the Void Waveframe Grenade Launcher Harsh Language, and the Solar Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle Coronature 22. This week's rotation will start on Weapon Set 2 on Tuesday's reset. Tuesday, December 19th will be the quarry on the EDZ for Exotic Helmets, Void Threat, Solar and Strand Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Scorched Earth Modifier, Overcharged Grenade Launchers with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Wednesday, December 20th will be a Fillion's Rest on the Dreaming City for Exotic Boots, Solar Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void Shields, Epitaph Modifier, Overcharged Shotguns with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Thursday, December 21st will be the Bay of Drowned Wishes on the Dreaming City for Exotic Gauntlets, Arc Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void Shields, the Raider Shield Modifier, Overcharged Snipers with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Friday, December 22nd will be Chamber of Starlight on the Dreaming City for Exotic Chess, Solar Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Epitaph Modifier, Overcharged Swords with Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Saturday, December 23rd will be Perdition on Europa for Exotic Helmets, Arc Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Arc and Void Shields, Shocker Modifier, Overcharged Fusion Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Sunday, December 24th will be Bunker E15 on Europa for Exotic Boots, Void Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void Shields, Shocker Modifier, Overcharged Grenade Launchers with Barrier and Overload Champions. 
And finally, back round to Monday, December 25th, will be the Concealed Void on Europa for Exotic Gauntlets, Solar Threat, Solar and Stasis Surges, Void and Solar Shields, Arachno Modifier, Overcharged Trace Rifles with Barrier and Overload Champions. Lead the way. Grandmaster Nightfalls kick off this week with our fourth featured Nightfall, which will see us face off against Grask in the reprised Lake of Shadows over on the EDZ, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This Nightfall is free to play. You'll be able to earn high-end gear for your characters including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, enhancement prisms, ascendant shards and adept Nightfall ciphers. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at hero difficulty to being common with ascendant shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Lower Nightfalls will have 5 unstoppable and 5 overload champions, with 5 solar, 2 void and 1 arc shields. Masters and GMs will have 9 unstoppable and 10 overload, with 13 solar, 6 void and 5 arc shields. Your Nightfall modifiers are Hero difficulty maximum effective level 1765, matchmaking is available, enemies have extra shields, champions foe, you will face unstoppable and overload champions, you can either use intrinsic exotics, use a subclass debuff or unlock anti-champion mods from the seasonal artifact. Void elemental threat, 25% increase at incoming void damage. Overcharge weapons, weapons overcharged from the seasonal artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic weapons do increase damage when your subclass element matches an active surge. An elemental surge, 25% bonus to an outgoing element's damage. Strand surge, 25% bonus to outgoing strand damage. Overcharge weapon, 25% bonus damage to a specific weapon. Galvanize, combatants have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend difficulty, maximum effective level 1815 includes all previous modifiers except Galvanized. No matchmaking. Denial, taken vandals have more shields. Epitaph, taken enemies drop blight geysers on death. Equipment locked, you will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts. Master difficulty, maximum effective level 1820 includes all previous modifiers except Galvanized. Champions mob, this difficulty adds more champion enemies. And togetherness, base health regen is reduced, if near another player health regen is increased. To combat champions you have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods. This season's artifact is the Queen's Force Sensor. The anti-champion mods available this week are Overload Auto Rifle, Overload Pulse Rifle and Overload Rocket Launcher, Unstoppable Hand Cannon and Unstoppable Bow. You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well. For Overload, the Void Energy Bola Monarch, the Arc Energy Linear Trace Rifle Divinity, the Arc Heavy Machine Gun Thunderlord, and the Warlock Exotic Boots the Secant Filaments, which when you drop an Empowering Rift, any weapon that is fired from inside the well can cause an Overload Champion to be stunned. For Unstoppable, the Kinetic Fusion Rifle Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon Malfeasance, the Kinetic Scout Rifle Touch of Malice, the Solar Energy Sidearm Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow Leviathan's Breath, the Titan Gauntlet Sash and Wake, where Fusion Grenade hits stun Unstoppable Champions, and the Hunter Gauntlet Sathos's Embrace, which have a chance to stun Unstoppable Champions with their empowered weighted knife. The 6v6 Control Playlist will feature Checkmate Control as a selectable mode. Checkmate Control is a modified version of Control, where rich primary weapon fights can happen more often, and gun skill can be augmented by communication and strong positioning. You will still have to capture the control point, but primary weapon damage has been tuned to feel a little differently from the rest of the game, without it being too jarring. This should reduce the gap between the faster killing weapons and the average time to kill, and in general pushing longer range primaries into the slower killing profiles. Player's health has been increased, but the passive regeneration of grenade, melee and class abilities has been reduced by 50%, and supers by 40%. You will also not spawn in with special ammo, instead you will have to earn it by generating points from kills, assists, deaths, zone captures and gathering heavy ammo. You won't lose points accumulated on death and special ammo you earn persists through lives and rounds. Additionally you do not drop special ammo on death. This all results in slightly longer combat encounters that reward skill and consistency. And Supremacy returns in the Party Relentless playlist. Supremacy is a 6v6 PvP mode which is a variation of Clash. Every Guardian that falls will leave a class based quest behind and collecting those is the key to winning each match no matter if they were dropped by a defeated enemy or by a fallen comrade. Securing opposing Guardian's Crest will net the team one point, and collecting a fallen teammate would deny your opponent that point. Focus on recovering the Crest to earn points and defeat the opposing team. Showdown will also be available in the 3v3 playlist. In Showdown, two teams of three compete in a round-based twist on the standard team deathmatch. Teams have to work together to score as many kills as they can across a series of five timed rounds. 
If each team manages to win two rounds apiece, a fifth showdown round commences, in which each player has only one life, kicking off a tense elimination style tiebreaker. Rounds are 90 seconds with a score limit of 10. Revives are available and reviving a down teammate before they respawn will take the point back from the opposing team. And available in the Crucible Labs playlist this week will be Relic. Relic is a 6v6 PvP party mode where all players wreak havoc and destruction on their foes with a Relic weapon. Relics include the Aegis Shield from Vault of Glass, the Synaptic Spear from Season of the Risen, and the Scythe from Season of the Haunted. Each player charges their personal Relic energy by defeating opponents with their normal loadout. Upon reaching full charge, players can acquire the Relic from the Relic Depot. Defeating Relic holders and using Relics to defeat opponents earns points for the team. Delightful! And Saint 14 will be back at the weekend with Trials of Osiris Dominion, bringing with him a whole host of rewards for players who do make it to the lighthouse and open the chest. These include the Hero's Wake Exotic Ghost Shell, the Valiant Memory Exotic Ship, the Survivor's Journey Exotic Sparrow, a new armor set, and the new Trial Shader Visor Regalia. Trials of Osiris Dominion is a 3v3 PvP high stakes game mode with a twist of a capture point. In Dominion, two teams of three go head to head in a battle for control of a capture point. Teams can either work together to capture the control point or eliminate the enemy team to win the round. Only available from Friday Reset until Tuesday Weekly Reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armor. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked through a passage card a ticket purchased from Saint-14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials of Osiris will grant exclusive weapons, armor, pinnacle gear, masterwork materials, and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of seven games won and no losses. Five round wins will bag you the match for your passage card. By competing in Trials, you do have a chance to pick up two pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning seven games. These do not have to be done all in one go, but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. That is amazing. As well as the Grandmasters going live this week, we will also have bonus Vanguard ranks and double Nightfall rewards. Plus, we should also have access to the exotic mission for the season called Starcrossed, where you can obtain and craft the new strand exotic bow, Wishkeeper. This week also sees Destiny's Christmas holiday event, The Dawning Continue, where you can earn the new Glaive, Alberto Wing, and a new Memento. So gather your ingredients, bake those cookies, and earn those treats. And that's it for the fourth week of Season of the Wish. Thank you for watching, allons-y.